Hi everyone and welcome to another video and today I have with me the P16 V Gen 3 and actually we had a video about its father not too long ago the Gen 2 and it's really changed I mean <laughs> it's in black instead of gray it has some uh, changed ports and uh, yeah, let's go over about it even though I don't have the original box still have its uh, charger within its original box let's unbox it and see what kind of a charger we're getting with it this time around oh i think oh it's a new brand new charger so it's 140 watts and it's type c so it means that it's going to be a powerful machine and we are going to benchmark it but yeah, I like seeing new chargers and it's actually really small. I remember the 130, I think it's 130, yeah. The 130 was a bulk, but this one, smaller, yeah. Weight-wise, it feels uh, on the heavier side, even though I think Lenovo could have done something with it. Its uh, weight is actually stated by Lenovo, which is 2.1 kilograms. Um, it's okay. I, they could be doing it better, but uh, yeah, and with the charger you were adding like uh, 200 grams So in total like 2.3 2.4 kilograms in total. So it's not that bad for a workstation Let's open it up and see what we are getting inside and let's test one finger test Does it open with one finger? Yes, it does <laughs> I love devices where you can open it up with just one finger. It means that uh, the engineers have done something really really good Ah, it's really beautiful. I don't know, anything that's like Lenovo-wise looks really professional. It does not look premium, but it feels like and looks like, man, I'm going to walk. And just before going over the ports and, you know, the rest of the stuff, let's uh, check how strong or uh, rigid its body is. And I'm using a lot of force. You can see that it's, it can bend, but it feels really good. No crackling noise, no nothing. It goes back straight to its original position and yeah, really, really good. And now let's go over the ports and see what this device offers. On the right side we have, on the left we are getting smart card reader, so let's go over its ports starting from the right side so we are getting <laughs> so we are getting smart card reader uh, sim card is optional and also the, the smart card is optional here it's actually not a port but it's speakers uh, speakers uh, headphone microphone combo jack Full SD card reader, USB-A, Ethernet like RJ45 port, and Kensington lock. On the back, we are getting nothing, which is quite good because then it means that the whole body is much more rigid. On the left, we are getting full HDMI, two Thunderbolt Type-C USB, and another USB port, and again, another speaker. All right, so now let's power it up. Let me update the windows and everything, and I'll be back in a second. So while downloading the updates and everything that's needed, you can actually hear its fans quite making a lot of sound. And look, it's not that bad, but you can hear them. Let me continue and finish up. The so let's go over the hardware and see what we're getting with this device. So for the CPU, we are getting the Intel Core Ultra 7 255H. It's supposed to be a powerful CPU. It has 16 cores and 16 threads, so it's a lot. Regarding memory, we are getting 64 gigs of memory, which is a lot, again, for any um, workstation that we currently have. I mean, some people would need more than that, but uh, the normal person would be satisfied with 64. For the disk, we are getting a one terabyte and that exact 
device name is Samsung MZVLC1TOHFLU-00BLL. Oh, those names. The Wi-Fi. So the Wi-Fi is Wi-Fi 7 BE201, 320 megahertz. Again, wonderful. I'm happy to see Wi-Fi 7s. NPU, as always, just uh, the AI part of the, the CPU. For the GPU, we are getting the NVIDIA RTX Pro 1000 Blackwell generation laptop GPU. It's a GPU with 8 gigs of RAM. And on the onboard, we are also just in case getting the Intel Arc Pro 140T GPU with 32 gigs of gigabytes. Hmm, seems a lot. We are going to benchmark them both. So regarding the display, the display is just Full HD. There are several options within Lenovo's site. Two Full HDs with uh, one of them being 400 nits and another one with 500 nits. But the premium one is an OLED 4K. So if you are going to use this device mainly with its monitor, then maybe you would like to get the OLED. But if I'm being honest, even the HD at this exact monitor is more than enough. Yeah, the colors are a little bit dull, but they are doing just fine work. And the keyboard. So the keyboard with 16 inch, which is wonderful, is also having a numpad. So it means it's a full keyboard without being um, weird like the P1 Gen 7 or whatever, or the whole P1 for that matter. The keyboard itself is really, really good. The keys are not too um, tall and not too short, just the exact size and height. Um, let's have a typing test and see how they are acting. So let's type something. So the keyboard is just wonderful and also a little bonus, two little bonuses. First of all, it has a backlight. So even if it's night, then you can read your whatever you're typing. And if you'll see, um, the keyboard has its own color, which means it's removable. So if you're having any trouble with this keyboard, you can just replace the keyboard without any big issues. Again, I'm giving another example, the P1 or the T14Ss, which you have to play, replace the whole top of the laptop. Well, with this one, you are just going to be all right. And for the trackpad. So the trackpad is just an old fashioned trackpad. And for the trackpad. So the trackpad is an old fashioned trackpad. And what do I mean by old fashioned? It's not haptic. It's not a glass top. It's just plastic, which is, in my book, is always good. I mean, let's try to move the mouse or anything like that. It's very precise. And it doesn't do anything weird or like, let's say I want to click on the right side. It just does it or click on the left side it just does it sometimes with the haptic uh, trackpads it's not happening that much and also it has its own three top buttons which act like another um, mouse just for the case of using also the button which again is being really good so yeah good trackpad and now for the speakers test Usually, um, I mean, not usually, but most Lenovo's devices that we had, had up-firing uh, speakers. But this one, they are downwards. Let's see if they are any different. So hopefully you've heard it. 
Um, so the speakers are quite good. I mean, no, they are not the best, but Lenovo had many, many laptops which were much post, and these are just perfectly fine. You are going to enjoy them while talking to you. And we're also going to play with the effects, for example, the automatic framing, which works really nicely and kind of cool. I mean, there is a slight delay, but it still is working. Uh, background effects are working as well. So it's quite cool. And I like having those AI effects without the need having another application to change it for you. And finally, for us nerds, the benchmarks. Let's start with benchmarking the SSD and see how fast it is. I am using the charger, so take it as a note, and we are going to run a test and see how fast the SSD is. And we are back with the numbers. So the read speeds are extremely good, almost 7,000 uh, megabytes, which is really, really good. I mean, any SSD that's above, let's say, 5,000, 6,000 is great. So I'm very happy to see that. Right though, is uh, 4,874, which is not bad at all. It's lower, but it's not bad at all. And if you're going to play on it, program on it, you are going to enjoy this device. And now for the CPU benchmarks. We're first going to do it without a charger. And then we'll run it again with a charger for the rest of the benchmarks. So let it run and I'll be back once it has finished. And we're back with the numbers. So the single core score is 2475 and the multi core score is 12861, which is kind of impressive. I mean, those numbers are really, really good. Anything that single core score is above 2000 is respectable. And yeah, let's see the rest of our numbers and we'll go and do the test again, but this time with the charger and we'll see if it gets any better or worse. Who knows? Okay, so let's run the CPU benchmark again, but this time with the charger connected, sorry. <laughs> and yeah, so let's run the CPU benchmark again and I'll be back once it has finished. And we are back with the numbers. So the single core score is 2823, which is really good. It means that uh, a charger gives it about 20% boost. And the multi-core score is 15,976. Again, about 25-ish boost. So if you want an extra boost for your device, just connect it to a charger and you'll be good. And now for the GPU benchmarks. So um, we are going to first run the benchmarks for the NVIDIA. So it means we'll run both the OpenCL and the Vulkan each time uh, for them. And then we'll do the rest of the benchmarks for the Intel for each one of them. So we'll start with the OpenCL for the NVIDIA RTX Pro 1000 Blackwell generation. I'll be running the benchmarks and I'll be back once it has finished. And we are back with the numbers, and it's been a while since I've seen uh, such a high number. Usually I'm not dealing with such um, good GPUs. So the open CL score is at 90,077. <laughs> it's amazing. It's supposed to be really good. Let me show you the rest of the numbers, and we'll do the rest of the benchmarks. And now we'll do the Vulkan GPU API benchmark for the NVIDIA RTX Pro. 1000. I'll be back once it has finished. And we are back with the numbers. So the Vulcan score for the NVIDIA RTX 1000 is 35,915. Let me show the rest of the numbers and we'll proceed to the Intel's onboard GPU and see what it gives out. And again, now to the GPU's benchmarks of the Intel Arc Pro 140T GPU with 32 gigs. Wow. Okay, I'm going to run the benchmark and I'll be back once it has finished. And we are back with the OpenCL score for the Intel on board GPU, which is 39,377. And look at the difference between the onboard GPU and the NVIDIA GPU. Almost three times the numbers. Anyway, let me show you the rest of the numbers and we'll go to the last GPU onboard benchmarks. And lastly, a benchmark for the Intel Pro 103 GPU 
with the Vulcan. I'll be back once it has finished. And we're back with the numbers. So the Vulcan score is 78,338. Impressive, I must say, for the onboard GPU. These are its numbers. And lastly, what about some gaming benchmarks to see how the GPU does in the real world gaming? And let's play some Valheim. Um, I'm on the lowest settings that are available and the game is just running so smooth, so fun. <laughs> I've missed playing games on such a low resolution and just, you know, just playing and enjoying it. Cool colors. But let's move it and change it to the highest settings. And here are the highest settings and the game does not lag whatsoever. I mean, yeah, the screen is 60 Hertz. It is full HD. So maybe the graphics card isn't, um, you know, being pushed forward or being pushed all over at all. But it, it does a fine job doing its job and yeah, overall good GPU, wonderful and good job NVIDIA. So I guess that sums it up for the P16V Gen 3 with the Intel Ultra 7 255H and the NVIDIA RTX 1000 Blackwell Edition and yeah, this device is doing pretty good job at everything from running CPU tasks for running uh, SSD tasks and benchmarks and even some gaming. He does it really, really good. If you can live with having some heavy weight and being again black like whatever uh, as Lenovo is usually being with, as a ThinkPad and you have no problem with some fingerprints being laid over over your back of the screen then you'll be good so thank you for watching and if you've reached this point um if you have any questions about this device please do let me know i'll be happy to share my um, experience with it and yeah i'll see you with another video